right. Hallelujah, hallelujah, and hallelujah to the Lamb of God. We are prepared to have a devotion today, and we will call this devotion the Grace to Listen. Hallelujah. Welcome to our time of devotion today. Welcome, and God bless you. Thank you for your patience. We had a few technical glitches that were unavoidable and unforeseeable, but each time we come to you, we will get the equipment in that's necessary so that we can have a greater quality sound as of today. This is the best that we can do, so we pray that you're able to hear us, and we pray that you're able to receive from the Lord. Look, I'm going to ask you to start a watch party right now, and if you don't mind, I'm going to pull up uh, my phone and my Facebook feed, and I'm going to start a watch party as well. So... Let's see. All right, here we go, here we go. We're gonna start this watch party and then we're gonna get started. The grace to hear, the grace to listen, excuse me. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Daily devotion, glory to God, glory to God Almighty. All right. Watch party has been started and we are prepared to listen. Glory to God, glory to God. Give me just a couple of minutes. Give me just a couple of minutes. Glad we're able to get together during this time of fellowship, during this time of the health crisis that we're in globally, we are still able to connect and experience the glory of the Lord together, together. Hallelujah. So I'm going to grab my Bible. I'm going to grab my Bible right here. And how about if we open up in prayer? Father, we thank you and we bless you. We honor you and we adore you. We acknowledge your love. We acknowledge your beauty. We acknowledge your presence. We acknowledge your anointing in the midst of us right now. And we thank you that you are our God in whom we trust. We thank you that your name is above every name. We call you Jesus right now. We call you our high priest right now. We call forth the blood of Jesus Christ. We call forth the spirit of wisdom and revelation that we might fellowship in your word, that lives will be strengthened, that hearts will be encouraged, and that minds will be renewed. In Jesus' matchless name, excuse me, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Well, I want to ask you to turn with me to the book of Luke, and we will begin reading in chapter 2, verse 25. The book of Luke, chapter 2 and verse 25. The book of Luke, chapter 2, verse 25. And we're going to be sharing about the grace, mm, 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 the grace, hallelujah, to listen, the grace to listen. The Bible says in chapter 2, verse 25, And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and the same man was just and devout waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost. Catch that point. It was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost mm. that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came by the Spirit into the temple, and when the, when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law, then took he him up in his arms and blessed God, hallelujah, and said, Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word, for my eyes have seen thy salvation. Sounds like Martin Luther King. For mine eyes have seen the glory, hallelujah, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light 
to lighten the Gentiles, yes, Lord, and the glory of thy people Israel. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. Verse 34, And Simeon blessed them, and said unto Mary his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel, and for a sign which shall be spoken against. Hallelujah. Yeah, a sword shall pierce through thy own soul, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. And there was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age and had lived with an husband seven years from her virginity. And she was a widow of about fourscore and four years, which departed not from the temple, but served God with fastings and prayings night and day. And she coming in in that instant gave thanks likewise unto the Lord. Hallelujah. And spake of him to all that looked for redemption in Jerusalem. And when they had performed all things according to the law of the Lord, they returned into Galilee to their own city, Nazareth. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Hallelujah. The grace of God was upon him. God bless your hoving home. Thank you for joining us today. We're so excited to be sharing the word of God with you at this time. I want to frame this time of devotion, this time in the word of God in a particular way. At this time where we're reading the scripture, we're entering into a new era. The Lord has said with this global crisis in health, with this pandemic, with the coronavirus going on, the Lord is showing us that we are entering into those who want to. We have, some have already entered into, but some people are still entering into a new era, a new way of doing things, a new way of thinking, a new way of going about the life that we live. And one of the things that I want to share is that when we see this particular scripture opening up and we're talking about the grace to listen, I want you to think about that for a minute and let that kind of settle in your heart, the grace to listen. I want you to know that there is a grace that comes from God that gives us the ability to listen to him even in the midst of a crisis. Hallelujah. This was an intertestamental time. This was between the Old Testament and the New Testament. And there were years of silence. Year, hundreds of years of silence when there was no word coming forth. I, I want you to think about and process this with me. Before this new era came, ooh, there were years of silence. There were years of silence before the new era entered in. Can you imagine the people who lived in Old Testament times where the, all they knew was an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, or they knew that when somebody did something wrong that they would stone them, they would punish them, they would stick to the rules that they knew. Can you imagine what it must have been like for them to step into an entirely different age, an entirely different testament. There was an Old Testament, and then as Jesus came and once he died, there became the new era of the New Testament. So in order to walk in the grace to listen, in order to understand how to remain anchored and remain grounded and remain centered in the time of any kind of crisis, you know, some of us are having a crisis in our family right now. Some of us are having a health crisis outside of this particular coronavirus. Some people are fighting a health crisis um, with cancer or with diabetes or with, 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 with uh, liver failure or all kinds of crises. It could be an economic crisis for you. Maybe you don't have the amount of money that you would like to have right now. Some people are experiencing employment crisis right now. And so I want you to know that God 
gives his children the grace to listen. And it is so significant that we are listening, that we are spending time with God in between testaments. Like this was in between the Old and New Testament, but imagine your life right now. God is bringing you into a new testament hallelujah we are we are finding out that we have to die to some old ways we're finding out that we have to let go of some old thoughts maybe maybe fear or maybe worry or maybe anxiety maybe uh uh, uh the lack of of courage and confidence there are some things that have to die that's a part of your old testament come on somebody we have to step into the new testament hallelujah we are entered into a new era a new testament hallelujah and all of the territory that we need to explore is not out there some of that territory is right in here some of us need to just declare to ourselves that i'm going to go into myself and i'm and i'm going to declare that i have the grace to listen for what god is saying right now and this is where i want to drop you into the scripture at the bible says that there was a man in Jerusalem in Luke 2, 25, whose name was Simeon. He was just and devout. And the Bible says in verse 26 that the Holy Ghost was upon this man. I want you to understand that in order for a new era to be ushered in, it only takes one person. It only takes one person that has the ability to listen. Simeon's name means to hearken. Hallelujah. Mm. His name means to hearken. To hearken means to listen and then we see further down in the scripture that this this prophetess Anna hallelujah who who went to the temple day and night who who stayed before the Lord her name means grace hallelujah somebody so God is saying even in the midst of of of, of uncertain times or in the midst when there is no word going outwardly hallelujah that inwardly we have the grace to listen hallelujah and, and, and Simeon being sensitive to the Holy Ghost he into the spirit of God and he was a devout man and he, he 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 was directed listen he was directed in between testimonies in between testaments in between old and new in between not seeing a move of God he still stayed locked in and I want to encourage somebody today to stay locked into the Lord. Don't lose your ear to hear because of what's not going on on the outside. There wasn't any movement on the outside. All of the prophets had stopped speaking. All of the of the of the, the men of God and women of God, the judges and everybody had stopped speaking. There was absolute silence. Hallelujah. But in the midst of all that silence, I want you to know that if somebody would hearken glory to God, if somebody would keep their time with God. Oh, what a deal. This man kept his time with God. He kept his devotion with God alive, even when there were no other voices coming forth, even when there was no major ministry going on. He kept his devotion alive. He hearkened unto his relationship with the Lord. And as he spent time with God, ooh, hallelujah, the Holy Spirit spoke to him. Come on, somebody. The Holy Spirit spoke to him and said, go on ahead and go down to that temple. I'm talking to somebody right now. I'm here to encourage you today to let you know that even in the midst of the middle, even in the midst of the in-between times, even in the midst of the two testimonies, God will talk to you if you will hearken to him and he'll tell you where to go. Hallelujah. Isn't that amazing? He told him to go to the temple. He told him to go to the temple and because he obeyed, hallelujah, when he walked into that temple, he saw the Christ. Oh, what a time in the body of Christ. Let's just obey God right now and let's believe God that God told us to continue to hearken to his voice and as we do we run smack into Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. What does Jesus mean? Jesus is our salvation. Jesus is God with us. Jesus, hallelujah, is the deliverer. Jesus has a name that is above every name. When we hearken unto God, we press glory to God 
into salvation. We press into deliverance. We press into the power and the glory of the Lord. The Bible says about Jesus that he is the word. Oh, yeah. God says when we hearken unto him, we run into the word. And the word was with God and the word was God. And the word became flesh. Hallelujah. How about the word becoming flesh in your life today? How about the word becoming more real in your life right now in this moment all because you have refused to stop hearkening unto God and I want to tell you as you're listening to God there's a grace coming to your life oh my Lord there's a grace coming to your life here comes Anna walking in uh, Simeon to listen to hearken has already picked up Jesus in his hands can you imagine hallelujah can you imagine going from absolute silence can you imagine going from absolute darkness and obscurity can you imagine going from no movement at all to all of a sudden you see the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings busting through the darkness hallelujah busting through disappointment busting through frustration busting through fear busting through everything that could ever try to tell you that God wasn't going to show up. Oh, this just blessed my soul. I came to let you know today that no matter what you're going through, God will show up if you will listen. God will show up if you will hearken. His word will find you. And then his word is also coming with the grace. Hallelujah. It's coming with the grace. What is grace? Grace is the power of God. Mm, mm, mm. It is the strength of God to do what you need to do. Hallelujah. It is the strength of God mm, to maintain your stance. It is the strength of God. It is the empowering of God. It is the influencing, hallelujah, by God's spirit upon man's spirit. What do you need to be influenced to do today? Do you need to be influenced, hallelujah, to keep your fire? Do you need to be influenced to maintain the revival that God started in you? Do you need to be influenced by the spirit? Spirit of the Lord, hallelujah, to be encouraged, hallelujah. We're going to take a minute and just worship God right here. Come on, let's worship God right here. Father, we bless you for your grace. We bless you, hallelujah, for giving us, hallelujah, your word and your promise that you would never ever leave us, hallelujah, nor would you forsake us, Lord. We're looking at Simeon's life, oh, we worship you, and we're looking at our lives. You're giving us a picture, hallelujah, that even in silence, glory to God, that even in darkness, hallelujah, that if we keep on hearkening, that if we keep on hearkening, we worship you, Lord, ha, for the opportunity to hearken to your voice. You said that if we dwell in the secret place of the Most High, that we would abide under the shadow of the Almighty. We worship you as the Almighty God. Hey, you are mighty. Hallelujah. You are mightier than doubt. Hallelujah. You are mightier than silence. Glory to God. We worship you because you are mightier than uncertainty. You are mightier than sickness and disease. We worship you, Jehovah Jireh, for providing a space. Hallelujah. For us to worship Worship you. We worship you, Jehovah Rapha, for you are our healer. Oh, we bless your wonderful name. We call you our mighty God. We call you our Prince of Peace. We call you our everlasting Father. We call you the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. We call you our ruler, our lawgiver, and our judge. We are hearkening. Mm. Mm -mm unto you. We're in a new era. Hallelujah. We have new balance. Glory to God. We hear your voice. We know when to move and when to sit still, Lord. We're going to be on time to see the manifestation. We're going to be right in step. Hallelujah. With the manifestation of the word made flesh. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Calibrate our time and glory to God. Calibrate our spirit. Hallelujah. Let us be 
in the rhythm, Father. Let us be in the flow. Wherever Jesus is showing up, Father God, let us be in the midst. Glory to God, we bless your name. And Anna comes in. So, Father, you let us know that hearing, hallelujah, hallelujah, hearing, glory to God, hearing and hearkening attracts your grace, hallelujah. It attracts your empowerment to do what's right. It attracts moral excellence, hallelujah, that when we hear from you, mm, let me see how much time we have, Oh, we're good. When we hear from you, it attracts, it attracts your grace when we when we listen to you, it, it attracts your grace. When we spend time with you, it, it, it attracts your grace. The Bible says in, 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 in verse number 40, And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. The Bible says that Jesus became stronger and he grew in wisdom. Hallelujah. And waxed strong in spirit. And the grace of God was upon him as the word becomes flesh in your life. Ooh, ooh, I hear the Holy Spirit saying hope deferred makes the heart sick. Hallelujah. But 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 when the promise comes, it is like a tree of life. Hallelujah. I'm declaring that that somebody's hearkening unto God, somebody's listening unto God, and you're experiencing life all over again. A promise fulfilled is like a tree of life. As your promise comes to pass, your life gets strengthened. The grace of God becomes stronger on you. You grow stronger in spirit, in conviction, in what God is saying that's going to happen in your life. He's filling us with wisdom right now as we hearken unto his voice. Ooh, come on, wisdom flow. Spirit of wisdom and revelation flow. Hallelujah. We will not lean to our own understanding, but in all of our ways, we are acknowledging you and we declare that you are directing our paths, Father God, as we worship you, as we hearken to you, as we listen to you. We are growing stronger in spirit. We are growing stronger in conviction. We are growing stronger in the things of God. We are growing stronger in the ways of God. We are growing stronger in the word of God. We, as we hearken to the Lord, Jesus said in his word, if you abide in me and my word abide in you, then you will ask what you will and it shall be done. I believe that God is telling us today that as we continue to devote, dedicate, separate time to spend with him, I believe that he's telling us today, he's telling us right now, that there is more grace to live life in this new era. There is more grace to have new balance in this new era. There is more grace for us to do what we need to do. The Bible says where sin does abound. Thus grace doth abound even more. There's a principle there. And the principle is this. No matter what the crisis is, no matter what the challenge is, the principle is that whatever challenge we face, hallelujah, there is more grace than there is challenge. <laughs> I want to say it to you. There's more grace than there is more challenge. You don't believe me? Ask the Apostle Paul. He says the abundance of the revelation that God gave to him caused him to have a thorn. Hallelujah. And that thorn was bothering him. It was agitating him. It was irritating him. He sought God three times. Hey, Shando Boshe reminds me of Jesus Christ in the Garden of Gethsemane. And he sought God. And God said, my grace Oh, I just got a revelation. My grace is sufficient for you. Wait a minute. Paul had a thorn because of what he was hearing. Paul had a thorn, a different kind of thorn, a different kind of attack, a different kind of crisis because of what he was seeing and hearing. And he asked God to remove the thorn. 
I ask you today, do you want the thorn removed? Or do you prefer to have the thorn and keep seeing what you're seeing and keep hearing what you're hearing? Paul was in another dimension. Hey, he was in another era. He was in a, a new heaven. He said that he went to the third dimension. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, as you and I go into new dimensions, there will be thorns, but God's grace is sufficient for the new dimension. His grace is sufficient for the new era. Because in order to see something new, while you're transitioning out of something old, it's going to be a cost. Paul was isolated. When Paul had this vision, when Paul had this revelation, he wasn't around people. He was spending time hearkening to the Lord. In your time of devotion, in your time of dedication, in your time of consecration with the Lord, God is going to show you some things. God wants you to see some things. He's going to give you visions and revelation. He's going to give you insight and understanding. He's going to pull back the curtain and allow you to see that the stage is already set. And even though it feels like it's tougher than what you can handle. Paul did the same thing that Jesus did when Jesus said, God, remove this cup from me. It was heavy. It was a crisis, but he was entering into a new era. I hope you get that. Jesus was entering into a new era of his life, a new era of his ministry. The apostle Paul was receiving revelation to bring to us a new dispensation of the gospel, not only to the Jews, but now even to the Gentile, even to the Greek. Whenever God begins to expand, whenever God opens up a new era, whenever God brings, excuse me, brings something new, excuse me, little cup. <laughs> whenever God brings something new, he always brings new grace to go with it. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. It means that when God gives us a new day, a new opportunity, a new door, he also gives us new mercy. He also gives us new grace. We don't have to be perfect. We're not going to be perfect. That's why we get new mercies every day. Morning by morning, his compassions are new. His grace is new. He understands all of us are trying to figure it out. God, how do I start the business? God, how do I reconnect with my kids? God, how does the husband and wife get back together after so many years of poison? God understands. And that's what his grace is for. As long as we continue to devote the time to God, like Simeon did and like Anna did, even when it's absolutely silent, even when all the light that you ever knew appears to have gone out, even when you're in between the old you and the new you, God said, if you will continue to devote time to me, I will give you the grace to listen. And if you listen, you will walk into the right place at the right time. And an entirely new era will begin, continue, and go on throughout the remainder of your life as long as you continue to devote it to him. Thank you for joining me today at this time. Pastor Teresa will probably be joining us on Friday if she is available. And if she isn't, she'll be joining us on next Wednesday for this time of devotion. I want to bless all of you who tuned in today. And again, we apologize for the technicalities, but we are here and we're going to do everything we can to serve you at this time and to continue to bring the living word of God into your home right where you are with power, with excellence, with authority, and with wisdom in the name of Jesus. Go on throughout your day. Devote time to God. Worship him and let him know 
who he is to you. That's because after all, you have the grace to listen. God bless you. You have a wonderful day. Look at the Secret Place schedule. We'll see you soon. Have a good one.